Yesterday we did 1 through 14, so we're going to start on number 15 today. So, which of the following provides the best evidence that a chemical reaction has taken place? Chemical reaction, that's when you get something new. Water, when boiled, evaporates and turns into vapor. Well, water is a liquid. Vapor is still water, it's just a gas. Still water, though. Sugar dissolves completely when added to water. Still sugar and water, they just make a solution. A liquid becomes a solid when heat is removed. So you take ice and, oh wait, I'm sorry, you take water and you take all the heat away from it or make it cold and it becomes a solid. It's still the same thing. It's still water. It's just changed state. It's not making anything new. Two liquids are mixed and a solid substance forms. That is an example of a chemical change. Remember when we mixed vinegar and milk and we had white chunky stuff? The solid that's formed is called a precipitate. Precip precip? I'm not sure if I'm spelling that correctly. But that was the white chunky stuff that we got when we mixed the vinegar and the milk together. A chemical reaction is indicated in all of the following situations except, so we're looking for the one that's not a chemical reaction. Gas bubbles form when baking soda is added to vinegar. Those gas bubbles are a sign of chemical reaction. A clear liquid becomes a solid when heat energy is removed. A clear liquid, that could be water, becomes a solid, that could be ice, when it gets cold. That to me sounds like a physical change because we're still having water, it's just solid versus liquid. But let's read the other ones. The temperature of a solution decreases when a powder is added. So we have a chemical change just by adding a powder. I mean we have a temperature change just by adding a powder. So a temperature change is an example of a chemical reaction. A yellow solid forms when two clear liquids are mixed together. That's another example of a precipitate, like on number 15. So that is a chemical reaction. The only one that was not a chemical reaction was letter B, because it was simply a change in phase. It wasn't a change in what it actually was. Number 17, a ball best demonstrates its response to gravitational force of the Earth when it collides with another ball, rests on a flat surface, maintains a constant mass, rolls down a ramp. So gravity, example of that would be rolling down a ramp. What's going to make it roll down the ramp? The force of gravity. Which of the following would best show how the force of gravity can move a book? Dropping a book on the floor? That sounds like gravity to me. Sliding a book across the table? No. Placing a book on a bookshelf? No. Turning the book face down? No. But dropping a book down shows gravity pulling everything towards the center of Earth. Number 19, students made two mixtures. Mixture 1 was made by mixing salt into water. Mixture 2 was made by mixing iron filings into sand. Which of the following statements is true for both mixtures? Both mixtures can be separated by pouring them through a filter, back to their original ingredients, using the property of magnetism, out into a liquid and a solid. Well, magnetism is only going to work for mixture two because it's got the iron filings in there. It's not going to work for mixture one. Pouring them through a filter, that's not going to help for it, either one of them, actually. Both can be separated out into a liquid and a solid. That's only mixture one. Mixture one, you could get the salt back into solid state and you would have the liquid water but actually no you wouldn't because the water would turn into a gas it would turn into a water vapor um, sand and iron filings those are two solids so you can't do that with either one of them but you can take both of them and separate them back to their original ingredients we could evaporate the water and have back to just water vapor which is water and salt we could take a magnet and separate all the iron filings out of the sand and have them back to their original state. In which of the following actions does a physical change occur to separate a mixture? 
stirring chocolate syrup into milk, evaporating water from salt water, freezing a solution of water and sugar, adding sand to a beaker of water. So they want to know which one a physical change happens to separate a mixture. Well, am I separating a mixture in A, C, or D? No, I am not. But in B, I am separating a mixture of water and salt, and I am using a physical change to do so because the water is changing from a liquid to a gas, and that is a physical change when we change states of matter. Moving on to the next page, number 21. Students were asked to follow the laboratory procedure shown below. One, measure out 10 grams of salt. Two, dissolve the salt in 150 milliliters of pure water. Three, evapor evaporate the water. Four, measure the mass of the remaining salt. Which of the following do you predict for the measurement of the mass of the remaining salt in step four? How much salt did we start with? 10 grams. So how much salt are we going to end with? 10 grams. Matter is neither created nor destroyed, it is conserved. So when you mix it with that water and when you separate it back out, it's going to stay the same. Students were asked to separate a mixture of sand and salt. One group decides to put the mixture into a beaker of water first. Which of the following should they do next to separate out the sand and salt? Use a magnet to pull the sand from the water. Is, is a magnet going to help? No. Let the water stand until the sand settles to the bottom and the salt floats to the top. Is that going to work? Does salt float to the top? No, it dissolves. That's not going to work. Boil the water from the sand and collect the vapor, which will have the salt in it. If we boil the water, is the water vapor going to have the salt in it? And can you collect the water vapor? Not very easily. Not going to work. Pour the water through a filter paper to remove the sand, yes, then evaporate the water and you'll have the salt left. So letter D was our correct answer. Number 23, we have a picture here of three ramps and they have, uh, looks like concrete, wood, and tile maybe? Can't read that very well. Students conduct an investigation which they let the same car roll down the same ramp in three locations in their school where there were different floor types as shown above. Which of the following questions was this investigation most likely designed to answer? So the ramp's the same, the car's the same, the floor type is different. Are they trying to answer A, how does the mass of the toy car affect its speed? Well, did they change the mass of the toy car? No. B, how does friction affect the distance a toy car rolls? Hmm, that could possibly be it. C, what mechanical advantages does an inclined plane give? Did they change the ramp at all? No. D, why does gravity make a toy car roll down a ramp? Well, they could be uh, investigating that because in all three you have a car rolling down a ramp, but the best one is actually B because these different surfaces are going to provide different amounts of friction. So B is the most likely answer. Students are investigating the forces that act on a wagon as it rolls down a hill. Which of the following would be the best way for students to determine how the mass of the wagon affects its speed as it rolls down the hill? So we want to know how the mass affects the speed. Attaching rubber bands to the wheels of the wagon. Does that change the mass? No. Starting the wagon from different heights on the hill. Does that change the mass? No. Adding one, two, or three bricks to the wagon. Does that change the mass? Yes. Let's see what D says. Pushing the wagon with different forces at the start. That doesn't change the mass. That changes the force. So that is not correct. Letter C was our correct answer. A student puts four objects in a bucket filled with water. The objects are listed below. Plastic ball, glass marble, metal paper clip, wood block. 
which two objects are most likely less dense than the water? Remember, if it's less dense, that means it floats. More dense means it sinks, but less dense means it floats. So a metal paper clip is going to sink. A plastic ball will float, but a glass marble will sink. Both of these are going to sink. So the wood block and the plastic ball would most likely float. Depends on what type of wood it is, actually. Some wood floats and some wood sinks. Number 26. Sugar was added to water and stirred until it completely dissolved. Which of the following correctly describes what happened to the sugar? The mass of the sugar decreased? No. Remember, the mass is neither created nor destroyed. It stays the same, so it cannot be decreased. The sugar disappeared and no longer exists. Yes, it does. It's still there. The sugar is evenly distributed in the water. That sounds correct. The crystals of sugar have entered the atmosphere. That means they're in the air. No, they're not. So they have evenly distributed with the water. Number 27. What happens in a physical change that distinguishes it from a chemical change? The properties of substances may change, but no new substances are produced. No new substances. That sounds like a physical change to me. The properties of a substance change for only a short time, but they will return to their original state. Mm, I don't know that in physical or chemical changes they necessarily return. An entire new substance with new properties forms as a result of the change. A new substance? That's chemical. A new substance is produced? That's chemical. So most likely answer is letter A. The particles in a substance move differently in different states of matter. Which of the options below shows the states of matter in order from the one in which particles move the least to the one in which particles move the most? So remember, the one in which the particles are most tightly packed is a solid. So since they're so tight in a solid, they're going to move the least in a solid. So B and C both have solid first. Then they're, most, they're a little bit spread out in a liquid, and they're very spread out in a gas. We actually did a drawing of them. I'm pretty sure this is a solid, very tightly packed together. This is a liquid, a little bit looser. And then a gas, they're just woo all over the place. So they would move only a little bit here because there's no room. They would slide past each other here. And they would just move freely in a gas. So that's in order from least to most movement. We're going to do four more questions, starting with number 29. Which of the following is an example that includes evidence of a chemical change? A sample of zinc is placed in water and settles to the bottom. Was there something new? No. A solid block of ice is heated and it completely melts into a liquid. It's still water as a solid or a liquid. It's still water, so it's nothing new. Sugar that is burned gives off an odor and turns brown and then black. We have a smell and we have a color change. That sounds chemical to me. A sa sample of a mineral is broken down into smaller pieces. That's like break tearing a piece of paper. Still paper, still the same mineral, just smaller. So letter C is an example of a chemical change. Number 30, the illustration of a candle shows some of the process that happens when the candle burns. The wick becomes black, the wax becomes a liquid, light and heat are given off. Which of the processes does not provide evidence of a chemical change? We actually discussed this. The one that's not chemical is the wax melting. When you change from a solid to a liquid, it's still a physical change. But changing color and giving off light and heat are chemical changes. Frank pushed two balls of different masses with the same force. Same force. 
Different balls, same force. How will the motion of the balls with greater mass be different than the motion of the ball with the less mass? The ball with the greater mass will move across a shorter distance. So if he pushes this ball with the same force that he pushes this one, this ball is not going to go as far. That sounds right. Let's read the other ones. The ball with the greater mass will move in a different direction. No, I'm going to go in the same direction. not going to change that. The ball with the greater mass will roll for a longer amount of time. Not unless he pushes it harder. Not going to go for a longer amount of time. The ball with the greater mass will move with more speed. It's not going to move with more speed. It's heavier. He needs to push it harder, and he didn't. So it's A, the ball with the greater mass will move across a shorter distance. The illustrations show four boxes being acted on by forces. So we have these two guys pulling it, it looks like, these two guys pushing it. Then we have two guys on this side and two guys on this side. Then we just got one guy on this side. Interesting. Every person pushes or pulls with the same force, so which box is most likely to move? This box, which is box D, is most likely to move. All of these guys are pulling and pushing with the same force, so their box isn't going to move at all. So we have completed uh, 15 through 32. We will pick up tomorrow with number 33.